what's up guys welcome back to my channel um so today's video is in honor of mental health awareness month dedicated to the month and our mental health um but this one in particular is in partnership with uh johnson and johnson but yeah so i actually have the chance to partner up with johnson and johnson which is an amazing company um and they uh, do a lot for just human nature and hum they're like very much the humanitarian um, and I got to go with a group of ladies and gentlemen to New York um, and to New Brunswick, New Jersey as well just to you know kind of really get a deep dive into what the uh, Johnson Johnson company is about. We obviously all know them as just like Johnson's baby powder and baby products but they not only are they um, they they cover a lot of other brands but they do a lot for their employees and just for the human um human race <laughs> you know they really have the human in mind and making sure that we're good on all levels mentally physically emotionally all that good stuff and so that's why i'm really grateful to um have partnered up with them and to create some content for you guys to help you guys out in honor of mental health awareness month um so i want to talk to you guys about just a quick thing about their credo it's this long basically like not their mission they don't like to call it a mission because uh, I think it's hard to think about how in their eyes a mission is something that they're aiming forward and their credo is something that it, it has to happen um, so the, the first part of, the, of their credo really like the first line I'm just gonna read it to you not only is it just good for their company but at, for us as um, human beings and being able to take in wanting to take care of ourselves I think it's just like they have a lot of things in here that um, really pertain to us as individuals and stuff like that but the first line says we believe our first responsibility is to patients doctors and nurses to mothers and fathers and all others who use our products and services so and then you have like this first line here and then the the last three paragraphs um, is then describing who their responsibility is to and so we are responsible to our employees who work with us th throughout the world we are responsible responsible to the communities in which we live and live and work and to the world community as well and our final responsibility is to our stockholders basically they, they put the stockholders last because it was if they're taking care of all the first all those other things first then the stockholders will automatically come and be taken care of and that's a responsibility and everyone's good so um that's just kind of like a brief thing in the credo i think that when we when we were there it was they the, all the employees everyone that we spoke to all the higher ups they did not stop, stop talking about this their credo was mentioned in every single conversation every single presentation um and so it was quite amazing. So that's just like a small, small thing, really like minuscule thing about what Johnson & Johnson is doing. Um, and I just wanted to preface this this talk with that because where this, uh, what I'm gonna talk to you guys about, I got from Johnson Johnson's website. They have a ton of things that, you know, you can go to for help. Um, and so going into that, I came across this, um, my computer's right here because I have the article right here in front of me, but I came across this article that was titled The Resilience Rx, Six Ways to Live Your Best Life with a Chronic Illness. When the, now this article um, was written for a woman named Barbie Engel who was 24 um, and diagnosed with endometriosis um, and then... And then after she was diagnosed with endometriosis, she was diagnosed with reflex symptoms. Sorry about that. Uh, my doorbell rang. But um, so basically, she was diagnosed with endometriosis, and then she was also diagnosed with, um, or she developed after an accident, uh, reflex symp sympathetic dystrophy. I think that's how you spell it. Say it. R R S D. Um, and so this article is kind of based around her. She's got this chronic illness that, you know, kind of altered her life. Um, but that's, I, I want to talk about this article because even though it is written in the sense of, like in the case of this woman who deals with something completely more than what I deal with as far as like severe anxiety and, and sometimes depression. But anyway, so I'm reading through these six ways to deal with a chronic illness and they all like this can be used for someone like me who um you know deals with severe anxiety uh so i wanted to talk to you guys about that i think it'll be a very helpful tool for those of you who also deal with the same things that i do um that's what i'm here for i'm here to help you guys and to kind of 
like help should, like help you guys live through me and, and see how I uh, deal with certain things that you may be dealing with too. And so if you have severe, se severe anxiety, this is going to be great for you. If you have depression, if you have ASD, I think, uh, where the seasons change and you go up and down. If you have any type of mental illness that you feel like you can't gain control of and you're not, it's really hard to deal with, I definitely would keep on watching this. And I'm just gonna go down and read these to you. If I look down, just, I don't have a, five concussions, I don't have a good memory um, as far as like when I'm having to read things and remember them that easily. Um, and so, unless I've like studied for a long time. So if I'm looking now, it's just because I'm reading what the, what's on the list and then I'll go in and talk about how that pertains to me. Okay, so let's get into it. So number one, um, so six ways to live your best life with a chronic illness. Number one is leverage the power of lists. Now, I 100% agree with this. A lot of these, in this article, a lot of these things have come from Dr. Andrew Chate. I think that's how you spell it, or say it. It's um, Andrew, S-H-A-T-T-E. Um, so leveraging the power of lists is um, make a list of things that your illness prevents you from doing and then make a list to counteract those preventions and ways that you can work around them. So um, in this case, in the article it says it, it gives you control of the situation and promotes optimism instead of feeling powerless. Now, that really spoke to me. So in, in my case, um, I feel like my anxiety has very much limited my my social life. I know that's like kind of like, oh, you have a social life. But no, like if you knew how I used to be, like I was called a social butterfly when I was in school. Um, I made vet friends very easily, like, which I can now, but not as much um, and so that's really altered my life because I kind of thrive off of social interactions and the fact that my anxiety limits me from being able to do that it really utterly like it just stops everything and so when I'm making I guess in the sense I would make a list of the fact that you know I can't make friends easily or I can't speak to people easily or I can't, I can't be around people in general like I usually could be, then I would write that on my list and then, you know, what's, a, what's one way I could work around it? Um, I guess take baby steps would be number one. So this would be um, unable to be around a lot of people. Take baby steps. So um, limit my time in big, in, in large areas of people. Um, only go for maybe 10 minutes and then in the next next time try 20 minutes, next time try 30 minutes. Keep, in, keep gradually including but also listen to my body. That's one thing I've also known. Listen to my body, listen to my emotions, listen to my head because they tell me what they want. My, my body tells me what's going on. So that's definitely number one um, as far as leveraging lists and writing out things. And also I want to add to that list about like gratitude is so so important honestly even just being able to like grab a note have like a gratitude notebook and every day write down five things that you're grateful for that day and that just starts your day out so much better because if you're going in the day thinking like oh my gosh i'm gonna be i'm gonna, I'm gonna be anxious all day um i don't know it's just gonna be a horrible day you know if you write a list it can make about things that you're grateful for it can really help situation as well or even if you're going through that panic attack Sit down, write down lists, write down what you're grateful for, what the situation is, how it's not as bad as what you really think it is. For me, I kind of tend to over, like be dramatic about a lot of things just because that's what my head is telling me, like the world is coming to an end. And I just tell myself, sit down, no, it's just your mind. It's not in the right place right now. Just take a moment and write down things that, that you can control. So that's it. Number two is give yourself permission to let go and accept your limitations. Now that is really important. Um, in the article it says skipping some of the tasks that you used to do um, and, and being okay with that as well. Um, I'm kind of, if you go read the article, that, that's great. I'll leave it in the description box as well, but I'm gonna try to put my interpretation on this there. Um, but I think that, that the number one thing to living with the chronic illness is just accepting it um, and accepting that this is your life, not giving into it. So acceptance and submission are two totally different things. Um, acceptance is, is, is what they say is the first step to recovery. So if you're, if you, I guess, if, I think if you're an AA, that's what they kind of say, acceptance is the first step to recovery. So if, you, if, I'm, if I'm accepting of the fact that yes, I have anxiety that I'm not used to, that I'm dealing with and that I really don't want, 
that's great. I now realize that there's a problem. And then if I'm, if I'm submissive to it, then I'm like, okay, that's just my life and what was me. Acceptance can lead to getting better and to being able to manage it. Yeah, like you just have to be able to be open with yourself, be honest with yourself. And that way, once you accept it, then you can go find help. For me, that was a huge thing. Being able to be like, you know what? I have a problem. I don't, I, at that point, I didn't really know what it was exactly. But I just like, I know I'm not the same person that I used to be. Something's changed. And I immediately went, not immediately. <laughs> Let me stop by and y'all. I didn't immediately go, but eventually I, I couldn't take it anymore. And I was like, I need to go speak with someone. And that has led to wonders of like help for me. So acceptance is your number one step number three seek out a support group specific to your condition now that's very important and this for me you guys are my support group um i haven't necessarily gone out to you know find an anxiety aa <laughs> i don't know what the right word with it is, but i think that like we're a community of people everyone all of us that are dealing with anxiety slash any other mental health issue we're a community because no one unless Unless you go through what we go through, no one really understands, you know, what's going on in our head, especially with anxiety and, and with mental health in general. I think that definitely finding a support group and, and just being, being able to find a support group makes you feel like a safe space and being able to be open and talking about it. We all know, I think that this is, uh, so far during these videos, I feel like everyone's, a lot more people are getting more comfortable to talk about their situations and what they're going through. Use your an anonymity to let your you know feelings out and be you know more open about things that you wouldn't be open about to help you to make you feel better number four practice the three good things daily mantra so i actually want to read um a, a piece from this article because i think it's really important the way that and it's in the it's in the case of um miss engel who the article was written about with the chronic illness therapist recommended she write down everything that made up who she was as a person she came up with whopping 75 items and it was empowering so this kind of goes back into making um things lists about gratitude um i know i mentioned it before on the leveraging list part but um this just kind of reiterates the fact that if you speak positivity and you speak gratitude your your ment your mentality will be completely different um in this case of um Ingalls, the patient who the article is written about, um, experts say she's on something. The pain, so the pain, so she says that the pain is real, but focusing on the pain doesn't make it any better. And when you maximize the positives in your life, you actually experience less pain, 19% less, according to his to the Dr. Chate's research. So that just says that like just speak positivity um, into your life, whether it's before you wake, whether it's as soon as you wake up, before you go to sleep. Speak positivity about your life, um, no matter how bad the, the day was or how bad the night was. Speak positivity and you will feel better. Number five is meditate your way to less pain and better Z's. Um, so this is just basically, um, for me, I do this a lot uh, for, with meditation or pr meditation slash, slash praying. Um, for me, meditation really is like pulling out an app, um, like a meditation app that I have on my phone, and it's spending maybe 10 minutes. Um, the article says 20 minutes a day, um, but you can do however long that you can manage, and just spend time just sitting there and at rest, and just breathing. Um, for especially for my anxiety folks, like we don't breathe enough, <laughs> because most of the time we're like, <sighs> okay, like we don't breathe enough. We need to really focus in on our breathing, hone in on those times um, to just like feel our body and be present and be in the here and now. Uh, because when we're anxious, we're thinking about all these other different things. We have to hone it on in, especially before bed. Um, do something that really calms your mind and calms your spirit. Um, I know if you have anxiety, you have really hard time sleeping. Hello, we've tried it all, which I found a lot of things that actually do work. So I'm not knocking those things, but also in pair or paired with meditation slash praying. If you have trouble sleeping, like it'll help a ton. And then at number six, finally, is reconcile the life you want with the life that you have. <laughs> that's deep so when reading this part of the article it's kind of just for me it says make goals make goals for yourself whether it's career goals 
mental mo goals, emotional goals, like make goals for yourself. Cause if we're not making goals, we're just staying stagnant and we're staying complacent um, in our state that we are now. I and mean, as human, we as humans, we can continue to get better and better and better um, no matter what. So I definitely think that that's something that, you know, you should do is make goals for yourself believe in yourself because if you make goals that means you're believing in your your capabilities and what you can do as a person um no matter your illness no matter what you're going through no matter your mental state making goals leads to positive uh self affirmation and it leads to you know making believing in yourself and what you can do as a person our mental health can sometimes cripple us and that's not what we want um, we have the control we have resources and to learn how to take control so as a human and as someone dealing with mental health um, make goals for yourself and be confident in yourself and starts and that starts with making lists you know taking positive steps into being better long story short these are the six ways to live your best life with a chronic illness Woo! Hello! Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it's very helpful for you in this Mental Health Awareness Month and you take it on through the next months and the next years. As always, if you need anything, if you want to talk to me about anything, leave it in the comments. Um, I will comment back as best as I can. I really appreciate you guys sitting down and talking to me. Thank you again to Johnson Johnson for sponsoring this video. Um, I think you guys are doing amazing work with your company and I'm so, so honored to be uh, working with you guys and also shedding light on some of the things that on a lot of the other things that you do with your company uh, it's so amazing so again hope you guys enjoyed this um, video don't forget to like and subscribe um, I'll leave the link to the, to the article down below and I'll see you guys in the next video Mwah.